Hello everyone, in this video, Apostle Joshua Selman will be sharing with us on how to make 2024 the greatest year of our lives. Stay tuned with us, be connected and be blessed. I will not going to give you time to dictate. Please sit down. I will not give you time to write. I will just run through it, get the teaching because I want us to pray. Seven one time when I taught you here, I think I gave you five or six. But I want to list for you seven destiny-defining decisions that you must make. Welcome to Start Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verses 130, The entrance of thy word is it life. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. Then we pray and wrap up. Seven destiny defining decisions number one very quickly what is the first decision that every man must make the decision to know the lord and to serve him all the days of your life please write it this is the first and the greatest decision that every man must make the decision to know the lord and to serve him all the days of your life matthew 22 37 the decision to serve the Lord and to, to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. That you will love the Lord your God with all your heart. And I'm so honored to have our royal fathers come and declare this not just for themselves but for the land. Number two, the second decision is the decision to contend for a soup superior belief the decision to contend for a superior belief system this is very important proverbs 23 7 for as he thinketh give it to us please as he thinketh in his heart or interchange for mind so is he the decision to come out of old belief systems limiting belief systems satanic belief systems mediocre belief systems number three what is the third decision destiny defining decision that we must make the decision to live a life of purpose and meaning please write it down the decision to live a life of purpose and meaning the decision to live a life of purpose and meaning hebrews 10 7 Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. A decision to live a life of purpose and meaning. This is to everyone, but particularly let me challenge the gentleman. It is wasteful to just exist. You give value to your life when you connect it to purpose. Beauty without purpose is useless. Intelligence without purpose is useless. It is purpose that gives value to anything you have. That means whatever God has given you in itself cannot be a blessing until you connect it to purpose. Are we learning? Number four, the decision to contend for health and longevity. The decision not just to be physically fit, contend for health and longevity please write it down it is a project that you must make i will live strong and i will live long say that after me i will live strong uh-huh prophesy it again one more time i will live strong and i will live long yes sir you don't want to live long being weak there are people who are in the hospital with all due respect they will not die and they will not be strong they become a liability to both themselves and everybody around the value of longevity is that there is strength if there is no strength contending for longevity is a waste are we together now there are young people at 30 40 25 they are so i mean they are so wrinkled they almost bend over as if their grandfathers you ask them how old you are are you and they say 27 and you say I was, I was going to mistaken you for 55 come on now in the name of jesus i rebuke weakness from your body yeah. agility and strength and power 
without agility and strength you cannot do the work of the kingdom you will collapse contend for health but contend for longevity it takes good eating exercise training your body and your mind a correct state of mental health to live healthy but then it takes speaking the word of god and making prophetic declarations over your destiny to live long you need both contend for health and contend for long life are we together as for me and my house we will serve the lord i choose life in the name of jesus no arrow that flies by day no noisome pestilence that waste in in noon day or wherever will hurt me no i am immune by the power of the holy spirit no enchantment and no divination shall prevail over my body my spirit is comfortable living in this body my organs are functioning maximally by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of jesus christ don't believe that the moment you get into a certain age certain sicknesses come with it now i respect doctors we have lots of doctors here but you can define your reality by choosing in the name of jesus at 60 my kidney my liver my health my thinking everything is intact by the power of the holy spirit is someone agreeing on that and you find yourself sick don't worry even while you are in the hospital taking treatment warn your tomorrow that just because i'm in the hospital does not mean i'm weak i'm only responsible it's not weakness it's responsibility so while you are going through the surgery while you are going through the treatment after everything don't feel ashamed speaking and let the devil tell you if you were that powerful why were you why did they perform the surgery on you the devil is a liar you speak it while you declare strength in the name of jesus vitality energy the bible says he keepeth his bones and none is missing is the covenant of peace shalom nothing missing nothing broken as a preacher you declare i will never collapse on stage because i'm i'm completely worked out and no if you are if you are tired you rest not die are we together The decision to contend for health and longevity number five the decision to be financially or economically empowered it is a very major decision refer to my teaching last week i shall not want please get the teaching is online and listen to it very carefully it is our heritage in christ to not be in want no matter what way or manner it comes lack and want does not glorify god period settle that once and for all and get it out of the way lack and want does not glorify god you can glorify god in the midst of lack and want but lack and want is not god's design for you just like a person can survive with only one kidney am i right on that i hope but that is not god's ultimate but if that is the case the doctors can manage the person to have just one kidney but that is not god's best john 10 10 i am come the b part that ye may have life and that ye may have it more abundantly choose life the decision to be financially empowered i don't want to go ahead of myself and i don't want to make recaps of last week i've already spoken extensively on that but my dear people please listen to this man who loves you sincerely make a decision under god that i will not be poor anybody who tries to think you otherwise must be ready to defend you in the midst of your pain and the pain of your children there are many things we're able to do today some of the things the projects that we want to do for people some of these people will never know jesus until they have the privilege to go to a good school it is expensive to preach the gospel i can tell you it is expensive to preach jesus with integrity you know how much one borehole is calculate that times 50. what then is your definition of love if you cannot reach people 
what then is ministry if one borehole is say 1.5 and you do 50 you went to school calculate that that is minus whatever it is that comes that is the price it takes to sell jesus to a dying world that is the price it takes to let men see jesus how about widows that are fed how about orphans that would have died i remember i think two years ago or so our medical team went to do an outreach in one of the idp camps and when they got to that idp camp they found a a, a young child that was almost left for death painfully the child eventually died i remember some weeks ago there was a woman who came with a child was a sickler joined the queue here i later found out that the child died it was so painful as she held that child you could see a product of pain malnourishment you know that she was a sincere mother but she was incapacitated it takes wickedness to sell poverty did you hear what i said it takes wickedness to sell poverty by god's grace and without sounding arrogant if it is for your own personal food you don't need much to eat but my goodness you need so much there's no need telling you the things that are done on a daily basis for jesus they require finances integrity requires finances in many regards preaching sincerely and not manipulating people requires economic empowerment in many regards projects that bring the name of jesus not to brag but sometimes it's good to say some of these things the inmates in the zaria prison not too long ago we bought them a big generator every quarter or so we send bags of rice stationaries mattresses the same was done i think early this year at the kuje prison these things cost millions and millions of naira i don't want to tell you how much it cost to do the manchester conference that had thousands of people coming to jesus if soul winning is not ministry i don't know what else it is no matter what you claim ministry is if souls are not one you are joking are we together i can tell you that i've told you here what it takes to run this service that you are enjoying right now it is a miracle only god can strengthen men to be able to do that hallelujah there is all not not to insult the givings of god's people but let me tell you sincerely there is only so much tithes and offerings can do believe me believe me you know i'm not lying there are students now going back to school by the privilege of god's grace i've had the honor of taking care of over 600 children and families i've done this for many years i only continue to add with joy it takes a lot of resources to do that let me tell you housing schooling everything my apologies if we sound i just want to give you a superior orientation when you don't know what to do with money you don't need it god will not even give you for your safety but when you know what to do with it you can preach jesus with financial resources and be a blessing to people day and night my phone is full of the cries and the tears of people please do this i just announced to you some of the things by the privilege of god's grace the educational fund just a test run of it alone was 10 million naira and it only keeps growing that is the price it takes to help these children you know his royal highness were having a meeting and he was telling me and i was so humbled some children who today have finished school who if not for that scholarship would never have had the opportunity to go to school what then is our definition of impact hallelujah the bags and bags were going to be in zaria this week now the concert alone do you know how much the bill for the medical i mean imagine gathering people i think they are projecting maybe between 600 to 1200 people free medical services you go and try to get a drug for for malaria 
and find out how much it is and then there are bags and bags of and we do it for both christians and muslims i love christians i love muslims i love everybody in between we are called to preach the message of love but that is the price it takes imagine me coming to meet your child who says on scholarship and i say sorry something has happened this family from today we cannot pay your rent know where you are going you can imagine there are many people who are converts who by the grace of god we are taking care of today that is the price it takes to keep them standing for jesus sometimes we say these things so that we do not you know i have a weakness between trying to brag and share testimonies it's not something that i like doing but occasionally if we don't say these things people just think we're talking about i mean what i mean how many things this is all of me how much money do you need to maintain a person like this but for jesus reject poverty in the name of jesus let it take away shame from your life and don't get beguiled by ignorant people when prosperity has purpose it is a powerful weapon in the hand of people hallelujah contend make a decision under god a hustler's approach i have told you is a defeated person's approach all this i want to make money so i'll buy a jeep so i'll enter no 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 that means you don't know god and you don't understand this program how many clothes can you wear in a year how many plates of food can you eat no the bigger cause is to be able to send resources for the sake of jesus i have seen souls saved as i stood i have stood by the grace of god on many crusade grounds and every time i see souls come to jesus i had a very interesting experience in ghana while i was doing an altar call there was this very little boy lovely little boy this boy was kneeling down and he was really you know just sobbing and praying i had to call him up and held him and prayed for him i mean i just my heart just welled up with compassion i was almost tempted to say listen let me put this boy on scholarship till he finishes school i just say well the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace maybe another time what if that child tells you he's an orphan who is just looking for jesus sincerely and then you tell him i bid you good speed go and read the warning james gave us show me your faith by your works if we claim we love jesus we must show it and resources help you to show that you love jesus i have vowed under god and as a covenant to you my dear people i will never may i not live to see that day that i will manipulate you financially simply because we are trying to put something in our pocket no there are some of us who fear god are we together but you see i have told you i am only able to say things like this because number one i love jesus but i will always say it. number two is because there is food on my table am i right on that yeah when there is food on my table it can give me the confidence to remain and teach the truth that i ought to teach if there is no food on your table you will listen to me but you will get up and go and do some things you should not do there is a woman probably she's following right now wonderful woman from one of the northern states and you know i'd never even seen her there was a tragic situation in, in her life i don't want to go into details compromises that happened be, because of finances for her and her family but today this woman by the grace of god and the privilege of his mercy has been rehabilitated out of that lifestyle living a life of dignity she has a business she's running now loving the lord with all her heart if you don't know what to do with money sit down and learn from those who know what to do with it every time you don't have understanding sit down and learn from those who know are we together yes i'm glad i made that decision it is a decision i, I will continue to make for myself and for koinonia so that we can do so much for his majesty for as long as i'm alive children will go to school for as long as i'm alive we'll do our best to see that widows and orphans continue to smile for as long as i'm alive i will help people financially i'm not ashamed to say it many preachers will be afraid go, ah be careful i'm not careful i will say it 
for as long as I am alive. I will not do everything, but I will do my best. Hallelujah. I will do my best. The ones we can help we will help. The ones we can cry with we will cry with. The ones we can pray with we will pray with. The one who we can stop from living a dirty life to be able to follow a life of meaning and know Jesus, we will do our best. Where we are limited, we ask the Lord to show us mercy and raise others who have our kind of orientation. But to chicken out just because of the fear of prosperity message is nonsense. Not Joshua Selman. It's a covenant I have made. I know how money can demonstrate love. And we intend to use that weapon and show nations the love of Jesus. If you're in agreement, say amen. amen. Try becoming rich with understanding and see how better your life becomes. Are we together? You will serve the Lord. You will end many quarrels in your family that have no root. You will end many things. You will live in peace. Do you know that remaining healthy takes finances? Because it demands eating well. That they tell you don't eat this, don't eat that. Is it not somebody who has money that can obey that medical advice? Take supplements, do this. Don't eat rice, don't eat cabbage. What else will you eat? <laughs> A simple surgery that was going to be performed on one of our ladies, I think. That, that entire procedure, because that lady's life was at stake, it will require about 600,000 for that to happen. Probably that lady would have been dead by now. But thank God for the ministry of resources with understanding. That lady is alive and healthy. And her family can see her preach Jesus today. Let me give you the last one. Koinonia is quiet. I presume you are thinking. Number six, I promise seven, the decision to build strategic destiny relationships. I won't say much there. I've said so much about relationships. The decision to build strategic destiny relationships. You must have one friend in your life. If you don't have it, when we are praying, pray. Because something is wrong. If you have many friends, you are in trouble. It's not a sign that you are popular. It's a sign that you are careless. Did you hear that? Because your values should naturally edit many people out of your life. If you think you are a celebrity and you have everybody just likes me, it's a sign you are a city without walls. You must have people of values and people of standards. But you need friends. You need friends. Many of us don't have friends. Hallelujah. Many of us don't have friends. I think I was giving a charge at the wedding of our people yesterday and one of the things I told them is that marriage was not designed to solve all your emotional problems. That is a big mistake. There are many people punishing marriage today because they expect to get all their emotional comfort from marriage. That is not the design. There are dimensions of relational and emotional comfort that only comes from your relationship with Jesus. There are dimensions of emotional and relational comforts that only come when you have godly strategic relationships. There are dimensions of emotional and relational comfort that comes when you have a spouse. There are those that come when you have children. They were all allocated their space. Hallelujah. If there is a relational void in you, check whether you have a relationship with Jesus. Then next to that, check if you have quality people in your life i'm praying for you may you never lack an ear to hear when you are in trouble especially if you are a man of god loneliness has killed many people because they do not have anybody they can confide in they are afraid of everybody around them because they do not even know who to trust again this is one of the problem of great people they have gone through enough wounds and betrayal. They just believe that everybody is out to destroy them. But it is not true. There are still honest people. There are still godly people. There are still good people. There are still friends that stick closer than brothers. May you be one. And then may you find one. Final decision number seven. Destiny defining decisions. Number seven. The decision 
to be a blessing genesis 12 3 the decision to be a blessing you will think that this is the same as finding purpose they are similar but this is different you can fulfill your assignment and truly not be a blessing you can excel in career and yet not be a blessing do you know what it means to be a blessing when nations arise and thank god for your life when nations arise and say thank god you are alive when nations arise and say imagine what would have been if you were not there that is what it means to be a blessing to be a blessing does not mean to be popular you can be popular and not impactful i learned that from dr miles munro there are many people who are pursuing fame and popularity popularity does not mean influence popularity does not mean impact you can be very popular known across the globe but not impactful anna the prophetess was not popular but she was impactful jesus was both popular and impactful i choose impact a thousand times to fame and popularity the burden of being famous is something that if you know you will not be in a hurry to receive it hallelujah the dynamics the pressure that comes with this in quote celebrity lifestyle that people die to have choose impact that somebody is smiling today because you are alive someone is eating today because you are alive someone is going to school because you are alive hallelujah someone will be saved this night now because there is koinonia a family will be happy somebody will act upon what you are hearing now only god knows how far what i'm saying will get to and whose life is being changed now do you know what it means to get up in the morning knowing that you are going to be a blessing you get up in the morning knowing that one sick body will be healed because you are awake you get up in the morning knowing that one confused person will find direction of the many things that happen when people send me text messages I tell you sometimes people say thank you and all of that but when i see testimonies of transformation apostle i was like this before i listened to one of your message look at what has happened to me now sometimes in my silence tears just begin to come to my eyes and i say father thank you for keeping me alive it is because of your mercy and your grace that someone's life is being changed today living a wasted life that does not bless people living a wasted life that is centered on self myself make money ends meet my reputation at the end of your life you will find out that you did not do well with such a life two teachings that will help you one what seekest thou in fact three now lessons from an overcomer you would want to get that teaching to listen to it again and again the final one being the law of seasons listen to these teachings very well and they will open your eyes i have studied the science of achievement i have studied the art of fulfillment the only gift you can give yourself is not money it is fulfillment the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity if christ tarries no matter how long we live someday this man you see will have to join the cloud of witnesses too you see that now when all is said and done the truth about it is that no matter how much you have in your bank account no matter how many certificates you gather no matter how many sermons you have preached all those things will count less the most important thing will be the lives you have changed today tl osborne has joined the cloud of witnesses reinhard bonke joined the cloud of witnesses hallelujah or our robert joined the cloud of witnesses pat robinson joined the cloud of witnesses all of these men but today we are proof that they succeeded we have become extensions of their legacy promoting preserving this gospel that they lived and died for this is what life is all about life is beyond eating and drinking as important as i'm i drum the issue of finances life is beyond making money life is beyond going to school life is beyond having a wife and a husband life is beyond having children life is beyond building a house the greatest way to live your life is to spend it glorifying jesus and then being a blessing to someone 
I want to ask you a question as we wrap up. Who can thank God because you are alive today? Who can thank God because you are awake today? Let's start with your immediate family. Can they say, Lord, thank you for giving us such a brother. Thank you for giving us such a sister. Thank you, Lord, for the kind of father I have. Thank you, Lord, for the kind of mother I have. I look at our royal fathers today and I can tell you as a man of God, I thank God for selecting these kinds of people to be our royal fathers. Only God knows if, if it was otherwise, a combination, a set of people that can hand over a territory to Jesus is the kind of royal fathers I want. Hallelujah. Imagine if Koinonia did not come to Abuja. Let's keep all the miracles and everything. Let's just focus on souls as a case study. You know the tens of thousands of souls that have been saved. I travel around and I'm telling you sometimes when I'm tired and drained, when I remember that living my life, the greatest way to bless people is to introduce them to Jesus. When I see people come to Jesus young and old, it does something to my spirit that is beyond being a preacher. That is truly what it means to be blessed. You give people food, if they die in sin, they go to hell. You heal people, they die in sin, they go to hell. You give people a house, they die in sin, they go to hell. You send them abroad, they die, they go to hell. But one who has Jesus has everything. Can I tell you this? You are here tonight, not just to hear a man speak, but you are here because a blessing is being made out of you. And the Bible said, destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. You become indestructible because you have chosen to be a blessing. I live a very happy and fulfilled life for the singular reason, if not any other reason. The fact that souls continue to be saved through my life is enough motivation to remain alive. If I'm not able to preach any sermon, if I'm not able to sing any song, if I'm not able to travel and speak to kings and nobles, if I'm not able to inspire a generation, if the only thing I can say is John 3, 16, and it keeps building, bringing people to Jesus, that will be my one and only sermon till the day I see his face. Examine your life whilst you are listening to me. Living for yourself is a loser's way of living. You must spend yourself and be spent for a cause that is nobler than yourself. To pour your heart for Jesus and to love him sincerely. The day that I will see his face, I'm sure and I hope that he will say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. And I hope I will see you too. Let me tell you, he will not just say well done to me alone. He will turn and say, ushers, where are you? Well done. He will turn and say, protocol, where are you? Well done. He will turn and say, medical people, where are you? Well done. He will turn and see the person who sent 10,000 naira quietly and say, well done. He will turn and see someone who sent a text and say, apostle, God bless you. And say, thank you for motivating my son. He will turn and see a mother who was an intercessor somewhere. He will say, thank you. He will turn to my royal fathers and say, thank you for insisting that the land serves Jesus. He will turn to all of you, my dear people, Koinonia Global, and say thank you because when you heard the word, you came and became a formidable army that has brought this many souls to Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your coming to church is beyond honoring the call of a man. No. It's beyond being a fan. There are no fans in this ministry. Fans have no reward. You are connected with understanding and by covenant. And I've told you, for every preaching, every singing, every instruction in righteousness, every nation that I travel to, you have gone with me in the spirit. Through your prayers, through your giving, through your love, by calling other people to be part of it. I want you to know that one day when we stand before his majesty, the king of all kings, as I hear thank you, you will also hear thank you. Are you ready to pray now? I choose life go ahead and pray I choose life I choose life I choose life I choose spirituality 
I choose transformation. Someone is praying. I choose purpose and meaning. I choose health and longevity. I choose economic empowerment to live a life of dignity and to serve the kingdom with honor. I choose quality destiny relationships. Finally, like Abraham and like the seed of Abraham indeed, I choose to be a blessing. Let my life count. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Declare, I choose life. Ask the Lord to help you. Every decision that you have made that has brought you pain, every decision you are now making that is leading you to perdition, leading you to destruction, leading you to decline, leading you to failure, leading you to anger, leading you to jealousy. Ask the Lord to show you mercy and to grant grace that from today you begin to make quality superior decisions by the word. By the word. The primary instrument that guides our making decisions is the word of God. Then the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Then the counsel of those who have gone ahead. Go ahead and pray before I speak over your life. For in Jesus mighty name we have prayed. He said as for me and my house choose life means choose spirituality choose loving and serving jesus passionately beyond church traditions choose life means choose to upgrade your thinking to a superior mentality that attracts possibilities that are worth compliance to your life choose life means choose to live a life of purpose and meaning not just rigmaroling around the corridors of life and destiny choose life means choose vitality whatever it takes to walk in health vitality and soundness choose life means to choose financial and economic empowerment that the lord is truly your shepherd and there are keys he has given you and that when you understand and engage those keys it is true that you shall not want choose life means choose strategic relationships you cannot be a believer in the midst of unbelievers and say it does not care you cannot be a child of god in the midst of people who mock god and say it does not care show me your company he that walks with the wise the bible says shall be wise himself but a companion of fools shall be destroyed and finally choose life means i choose to be a blessing that one day the nations will call your name and say thank god you came that you will not just be a number that passed the face of the earth but one day they will thank you and say thank god for such a daughter you cannot imagine how honored i was again to make reference to our royal fathers when they said some of the things that they said it is truly an honor to be alive and to serve and to serve in a way that your people and the nations can see that you are making efforts and you are doing well to serve Jesus. We may not have done everything. There is always room for more. But my goodness, I am so glad to serve Jesus. I am so glad to live for him. I am so glad to spend my days heralding his name to the nations to be a blessing. Someday one child will come to Koinonia and hug you and you say, who are you? And you say, I'm the child you prayed for. I'm the child you paid school fees for. Who are you? I am the child who your sermon stopped me from serving idols. Someday someone from my region will come and hug me and I will say, who are you? And he said, you may not know me, but I watched that day 
when your land was being handed over to Jesus. Amazing, isn't it? Make up your mind that I will not live an ordinary life again. The key is not to do ministry. The key is to serve Jesus. You can do ministry and be out of the will of God and be wasting your time just trying to build an empire. Serving Jesus is a better proposal with all your life, with all your heart. As I speak over your life, I want to make one strong call right now. Choose life means choose Jesus. Choose his life. Choose his ways. Choose life means give up your ways and follow the ways of Jesus. Perhaps you began to hear me whilst I was preaching. And while I was preaching, the Spirit of God began to speak to you. And he was telling you, listen to this, my son. Listen to what he's saying. Because in choosing me, you have chosen life indeed. The greatest way to choose life is not to make money. The greatest way to choose life is not to be educated, as important as that is. The greatest way to choose life is not even just to serve in church. It is to have that functional relationship with Jesus. I want to make an altar call now. Whether you are outside, all the overflows, inside, following across the globe, here is an opportunity to know Jesus in truth. I'm going to count one to five. And I'm calling by this count two groups of people. Number one, those who will say, Apostle, give me the honor of making this decision in the presence of God's people once and for all. For someone you are saying, hearing you speak, I have made bad decisions. I want to rededicate my life sincerely. As I count one to five, without shame, without fear, I want you to leave your seat and run. Come and stand here now. One. Koinonia, let's celebrate them. Don't sit back when the Spirit of God is telling you you need to come. Come. Koinonia, keep clapping. It is your sacrifice. You are encouraging them as they come. Come. There is always room for you at the cross. Dear brothers and sisters, come. No matter how you have derailed, come to Jesus. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Come. Yon hey, why hey is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Join them, you have just a few seconds. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Come, come. Just breathe your name upon me. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I want to salute you, my dear brothers and sisters, for making this noble decision. The wisest decision any man can make in this side of God's kingdom is the decision to make it right with Jesus. That is true security when we get it right with him. You can fail in every other area, but if you get it right with Jesus, you are a victor indeed. You are a winner indeed. I'm going to be praying for you now. That includes those who are watching by television, those who are watching online. Here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. May I request that you please lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender say this after me say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever. I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your beautiful hands lifted and I speak over you. Father, thank you for these precious ones. You have brought them to your presence to change them. Now they are changed. I pray that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave be broken over your life. 
and in the name of jesus i decree and declare that every force that has held you down let it give way right now i just saw light coming on two of you there are two of you i just saw like light resting on you i cause that spirit right now in the name of jesus christ i release you from anything and everything that has held you down the power to live a victorious christian life i release upon you right now in the name of jesus you go forward ever and backward never in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen and amen let's give them a big god bless you